There will be no time behind bars for a former Kelowna RCMP officer who pleaded guilty to kick kicking a man in the face. This morning, a judge handed Jeff Mantler a suspended sentence plus 18 months probation. The former police officer is not banned from owning firearms, as Crown had been asking for, but he was given a fine and ordered to do community service. In January 2011, Mantler was caught on video kicking Buddy Tavares in the face while on his hands and knees. Welcome back. Part two of our special on police brutality in the Okanagan. I'm Darren Howard. I'm Robert Nisbet. So good to be with you here today as we get ready for our major rally coming up here May 18th, 2013 at City Hall. Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada is where we're broadcasting from. You are tuned in to the alternative media, independent media for an intelligent mind. Here we go. Two RCMP officers in Port Alberni are now under investigation after a woman was seriously injured while she was being arrested. Taken into custody just a few blocks away from the local detachment. And by the time she arrived in RCMP cells, she had a shattered kneecap. CTV's Scott Cunningham spent the day in Port Alberni and has the story. Hudson, early this morning, a team from BC's Independent Investigations Office descended on Port Alberni, placing two Mounties under their microscope. At issue is how a local woman had her kneecap broken during an arrest on February 15th. Police say they found the woman at this street corner, just one block from the Alberni RCMP detachment, and arrested her for breaching a previous court condition. Investigators are now trying to determine what happened between the time of the arrest and her arrival at police cells that left her with a fractured knee. Witnesses I spoke to today would not go on camera, but say the woman who was arrested is well known at the local homeless shelter and was heard the night of the arrest screaming, you broke my leg, you broke my leg from the back seat of a police cruiser. Now, local RCMP are offering very few details today and will not say if the two officers at the center of this investigation are still on active duty. Hudson? Scott Cunningham reporting tonight in Fort Alberni. That's the way we start things off, putting two and two together. There are other cases of police brutality. They're not connecting to Buddy Taveras. It's happening right now. But we are connecting those dots. We are. We're talking about all of the women. There's a whole raft of women out there suing the RCMP right now. There's a class action suit of national proportions. They're not putting two and two together with Buddy Taveras at CHBC. That's why we're here. Somebody has to pay attention to these issues because if, if we don't, we'll just let the national media drop the ball as they usually do. So let's run one more. It's another story they're ignoring. It's Radio Free Canada. We're back. Hang on. Lambert High School senior Ryan Mash says he thought his life was over last week when DeKalb Sergeant Scott Biumi allegedly shoved a gun in the teen's face while they both waited in a slow McDonald's drive through line. The shocking part, the fast food confrontation was caught on tape. Two of Mash's friends were in the pickup truck with him and couldn't believe what was happening. Mike says he knew he had to get the man's license plate. With that vital information, the sheriff's department went to work. The Forsyth County Sheriff calls this case disturbing. The, the public rightfully expects more from the law enforcement officers uh, and for something as small as your food taking too long to get there for an officer to snap. We went by Sergeant Biumi's house tonight, but he referred us to his attorney. Larry Deland, my attorney. Oh, you, can you say anything to us? Larry Deland. Is he around here? No, he didn't care. If he overreacts about somebody being slow in the drive through then he could overreact at another case. Now that DeKalb sergeant was arrested at police headquarters this morning. He bonded out of jail this afternoon and as you just saw declined to talk to us. But we do know that he faces one count of aggravated assault. Reporting live in coming, Angelique Proctor, Fox 5 News. So he got upset because his fries were taking too long. Well, it was the guy's order ahead of him that was taking too long. I guess he was really hungry. Yeah. The background on this, right? When was that from? When was that clip from? Oh, that's pretty recent. That's April 18th. 
Okay, so this is happening all the time, but where's the two and two? Now, remember, if you've got one guy who gets in a car accident here, you talk about the last 12 car accidents. you got one guy who had a bad shopping experience. You had to talk about the last 12 sh bad shopping experience, but one bad cop. Yeah. <laughs> it's a unique it's and a unique. individual. There's no connection at all. Well, maybe they should take a look at his diet. <laughs> You know, maybe it's maybe McDonald's food is a causal factor in this. I think, yeah, you actually have to check and see if he's on antidepressants or McDonald's, and then you'll find out where the emotional imbalance comes. Do you think in. they actually put SSRIs into McDonald's food? <laughs> Those of you out there who are really paying attention, you know, police brutality. We do try to make some fun because, man, this is a serious subject, and there's a lot of really angry people about the fact that Jeff Mantler got charged, uh, got probation and a $50 fine and community service. After being caught on video committing a crime. It's something so egregious. I mean, the, the judge himself says that it's such, it's such outrageous force. Okay, I can't, I'm t trying to see. I've got this multi-page document, the judge's, the judge's decision yeah. in my hand. And uh, I want to, we're cutting it up. We're starting to get some legal analysis of it because a lot of people are really volunteering and they're kicking in their money and their time to what we're doing around here because they recognize that we need to start taking a look in depth at these things. And it's a worldwide problem, but it's really becoming prevalent down in the United States. And down there, they have things like the NDAA. They've got this bizarre rule in, Nash in Canada right now where the FBI or the cops down in the States can operate in Canada. Thank Mr. Harper for that. I'm not very comfortable with that. No. I mean, look at the way they behave all the time when they're in McDonald's drive through <laughs> There's also the case. Do you want to run this? Is this cool? Oh, this is just another example of the police getting away with a crime. Okay. So hold your breath. Well, remember this video that came out during the early days of the Occupy Wall Street movement in New York? <laughs> Or how about this video of a police officer punching a protester seemingly without provocation? Oh my God. Oh. Now hear this. A Manhattan district attorney decided that the two NYPD officers featured in these videos will not face charges. The DA cited a lack of evidence in both cases. A statement relieving both officers of any charges was quietly released last week, much to the disappointment of the protesters involved in those incidents. Chelsea Elliott was one of the people featured in those videos and joins me now to talk about this decision by the DA. So let me ask you, how would you like to see these officers punished, your officer in your particular case? I would like to see him punished just like any other citizen that would assault another civilian in the same manner. And Chelsea, uh, what have you, uh, ex what have your experiences been with police officers since this incident? <laughs> uh, following right after, I, I definitely experienced a, a lot of anxiety. Um, now I don't have any personal vindiction against any sort of the police officers, but um, I think that the organization of the NYPD as a whole has really uh, disappointed me. I feel that the officers are not really provided the tools and trainings. Uh, necessary for dealing with all these different types of situations and I feel that these violent sort of outbursts were a reflection of that. Chelsea Elliott, she was the Occupy Wall Street protester that was featured in that pepper spray video that has gone viral. That's a vitally important point. She's really making her point known. That's right and uh, the parallels between this and the Tavares case are quite eerie. I know. These guys, they get let off scot-free. There's no... <laughs> you can forget about sending a message to the RCMP that it's a bad thing. Okay, you're sending two messages. The judge sent two messages in the case of Buddy Tavares Regina versus Jeffrey Adam Mantler. The number one is that you can be the general public. You're not safe. And That's number right. two, you will... And uh, number two, you can be an RCMP officer. You will not be held accountable. And that's it. Not that's as far as we've seen. No. And there's no slap in the wrist for that one. Everyone looks, uh, wow, $50 fine. That's offensive at best. But but what's really offensive about that is those NYPD cops aren't even being charged. I know. Lack of evidence. Um, Excuse me? Um, I'm <sighs> looking at the tape. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. You know, but this you might take a, it out of context, right? Now, for those of you who think that, you know, conspiracy theories and all this, we always say check our facts. Don't take our word for it. But go and look at MSNBC, CBC, 
and uh, Global on their website. Look up things like uh, sexual harassment, systemic sexual harassment amongst the RCMP. Global? Uh, Nothing. It's like, uh, yeah. Okay. Jeez. All right. So check it out. We've got a more a bigger update on this, but the worldwide problem of police brutality can be solved. And we're going to talk about those solutions coming up May 18th, 2 p.m. at the Kelowna City Hall, where we are going to march on the RCMP. Some of us and some of us will just hang around and, uh, you know, sing a song. Yeah. Uh, this one coming uh-huh. up, police brutality. Yeah. You want to run this? Of course. You know, because you know, if there's video evidence, there's one thing you can do. Some disturbing, and we warn you of that police video. A woman suspected of drunk driving ends up on the floor of a police station. How did she get there? The incident was caught on tape, but David Murray is back here now because it seems that a key portion of the tape is missing. David? Yeah, it's a classic case of he said, she said, Diane. But as you mentioned, it all comes down to what's on the tape, or more importantly, what's not there. And we want to warn you this morning that the video is really quite tough to watch. Angela Garbarino, seen here, was arrested last November on suspicion of DWI by Shreveport, Louisiana police. On the tape, you can hear her repeated demands to make a phone call. I have a right to call somebody right now, and I know that. Wiley Willis, the arresting officer, has been trying to read her her rights, but he runs out of patience, and things turn ugly. What happens after that is a mystery. Because as you can see, the officer turns off the camera. When the recording resumes, Garbarino is lying in a pool of her own blood. Another officer takes a look before she's taken away on a stretcher. Garbarino suffered two black eyes and cuts to her face, along with two broken teeth and bruises. She says the officer beat her up. Willis was fired, but a statement from his attorney says he turned off the tape, quote, in accordance with normal practice, and added the suspect tried to leave the room in the process of stopping her, she fell and injured herself. Experts who reviewed the footage say at the very least, the officer should have called for female backup. And you can see this morning why so many people are reacting to this. Police decided not to file criminal charges against the officer, saying no one knows for sure what happened because the tape was off. But when he says he turned off the tape in accordance with common practice or with practice, what does that mean? Yeah, that's what I was wondering. And apparently, according to police policy in that jurisdiction, if they do not agree to take a sobriety test and get booked, then they're allowed to turn off the tape, which makes you wonder, is it time to revisit the policy? Very strange. Okay, thanks. Yes, it's a case of I must be taking crazy pills. You know, I mean, it's, it's the policy to turn off the tape? I mean, come on. Who do they think that they're kidding? And, you know, they're, one of the major statements that the RCMP makes is says, well, you don't know the way it is. You don't know what it's like to be a cop. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We deal with you all the time. Yeah. Okay. And we have weighed and judged, and we're the citizens that become cops. It's not so different dealing with everybody once you become a cop. Yeah. It's not like we live in Columbine. Yeah. Ah, oh, yes. You caught that too. During oh, yeah. the during the trial, and we're taking we're checking it out. Uh, the judge actually says Kelowna's Columbine. Is that right? Did I get that right? That's what you said. That's what this incident at the golf course could be. Is Kelowna's Columbine. It's like, really? What on earth? The statistical statement that's being made here. We have 30 million Canadians, but British Columbia has the most number of deaths while in custody for the RCMP of the entire nation. We have more people being, you got eight times more likely to be killed by a cop than a terrorist. But what does he focus on? Oh, he focuses on something that happened down in the States. That and was some involved. gun crazy, 10 times the murder rate amongst guns, as yeah. if we're the same. Yeah. We're Canadians. Thank you very much. And that's offensive to be um, linked in with that. But our Facebook book group was lumped in with cop haters for some reason. Yeah, and I post love me cops all the stories on there all the time. We tried to bring both sides to the story. And we tried to argue the cop side as much as we could. We brought out the positive stories. Sure, there's people who don't want to hear that side, but to be vilified? Yeah. Well, uh, that kind of made me I laugh. I kind of thought it was good publicity myself. It was. But there's an extraordinary minority of cops, judges, and lawyers compared to the numbers in society. And I think that's the problem that they're all dealing with. It's that kind of day today because we are getting ready for May the 18th at City Hall. We're going to demand justice for Buddy Taveras and tell the cops what we think of them. You see our posters going up all over. Right now... 
Demand justice for Buddy Taveras. Join us May Long Weekend, Saturday the 18th. I'm Darren Howard. I'm Robert Nisbet. What do you think, man? Going to be a good show? I think so. All right. We're there for you. Peace without the quiet.